king of the Canadian Hill. How haunted is our Ontario? <laughs> Located 55 kilometers north of Toronto with a population of 90,000 souls is New Market, Ontario. And within this New Market of Ontario consists a plot of land that connects the history of the old with the history of the new. Fairy Lake and the Old Town Hall. Built in 1883 on Dominion Day, which is now Canada Day, is a two-story Ateliante style projecting a front space with a crested central square bell tower. This was a building that held York County's offices, large farmers markets, a courthouse, jail, and town-wide business and meetings for all of York. Now, it's a place where you do theater, yoga, dancing, weddings, Jack and Jill's art shows, and other pinko stuff. Sightings of a jail guard can be seen throughout the building. The sound of his key ring rattling throughout the building can be heard. There was even a picture taken by one of the windows showing said guard with his key ring in his pocket or hand. Maybe. By a construction worker working at the building. It was said that the renovations were slowed down, held up due to the ghostly activities that had happened to the workers while on site at the old town hall. The Fairy Lake, which is not so much a lake from what I saw. More like a, more like an incredibly large pond. But nevertheless, they call it a lake. is a place where people go to have fun, not swim in this lake. Roam around and go through a giant trail that stretches three townships. But at night, after the trains go by, after the people have left, and after the trail has stopped being used, maybe, possibly not, there is the sightings of a ghost, but not just a regular old ghost that you see walking around, no, this is a ghost of a goat man, yes. If you come to Newmarket, Ontario, and you venture the grounds of Fairy Lake at night, you might encounter the Goat Man Ghost. Back in the late 1800s, a local drunk, drinking and eating some date squares, wanders over to the goat farm to feed a date square to a goat. The drunk stumbles over and knocked the latch off the door that held the goat in. As the drunk stumbled over to the train tracks, the goat, now free, followed, looking for more date squares, I gather. The drunk passed out on the tracks, and the goat decided to eat the drunk's date squares in his pockets or around his hand or wherever they kind of lined up their torsos I gathered and that is when the train approached neither drunk nor goat seemed to notice this train going down the tracks very loudly and well the train ran over them cutting them in half 
still alive, still coherent. The drunk was. He tried to put himself together by trying, attempting to grab his lower half and stick it back to himself, stick himself together. But I guess in shock, horror, or just plain drunkenness, he grabbed the lower half of the goat instead and pieced himself together. This obviously only lasted a couple of seconds and he died moments later. But somehow, some way, for some odd reason, this is the goat man ghost that you see now. He can be seen roaming the Fairy Lake Park area, crying out, looking for his lower half, his human legs. Also, there can be a sound of clitter clanks, whatever sort of goat hooves that make on the gravel or paved area. And I was told that it could be heard that there's the sound of goats buying or aying or whatever the sound a goat makes in the darkness of Fairy Lake. As I was about to leave the Fairy Lake Park, I was approached by a very lovely couple, the Yamitskis, as they told me a terrifying story of a party they hosted at their house. And as the party went on, they used a Ouija board to contact the Goat Man Ghost. They invited over the Ponitskis and the Kwanitskis to a lovely house party on Halloween night. And to liven up the party, they decided to use a Ouija board to contact the Goat Man Ghost. It was just after dinner, a few glasses of wine and a few cans of beer were ingested the board was taken out, placed on the table, the little sight glass for the Ouija board placed in the middle. The three couples stared at each other. They were nervous. They were eager, excited in order to ease themselves to make this a more fun experience. Date squares were handed out, very delicious date squares from what I was told. After ingesting a couple of date squares, the three couples began to settle into the game and give it a try. All hands were placed on the Ouija board and the beckoning, the call out to the goat man ghost had begun. The one couple asked where, if anything, is the goat man ghost here? And the little Ouija board sight glass slid over to yes. Then they asked, is this really the goat man ghost? Can you spell out your name for us? The Ouija board sight glass slid over, G, then slid over to Oh, then slid over to, back to O, then slid over to T, then slid over to M, then slid over to A, and then slid over to N. They knew then that the goat man ghost was incredibly uneducated and he had misspelt his own name. This, they knew, was the true Goatman Ghost. As the game went on, as the Ouija board experiment continued, one couple, the Kwamitskis, began to question their own sanity. They asked the Panitskis what the heck was going on. 
the Panitskis replied that not only do they believe that this is happening, but they are actually seeing the goat man ghost in the house right now, right behind the Yamitskis. The Yamitskis turned around and to their shock and horror, they were surprised to see not the goat man ghost, but a red horse, green alien, and a blue butterfly. The Panitskis didn't see anything other than just kind of blurry red and blurry blue and kind of rainbow colored lights and fireworks. As this was revealed, as their sightings were revealed to each of them, they quickly realized that something was amiss. Something didn't make sense. The Omitskis then actually revealed to the Panitskis and the Quinitskis that in fact the date squares had a big pile of peyote stuffed in them. The couple didn't know that the peyote was this potent and this good that they were hallucinating the entire time and that this little party was gonna last three days more. After the third day, the peyote finally wore off and the adventure had concluded. What type of adventure that was, they did not reveal to me. But needless to say, the Omitskis don't talk to the Panitskis and the Panitskis don't talk to the Kunitskis and the Kunitskis don't talk to the Panitskis and nobody wants to know what the hell's up with the Omitskis anymore. They quickly moved away a few months after that I heard. But that's a different story altogether. It has nothing to do with ghosts, I reckon. And you know what else has nothing to do with ghosts? New Market's four giant ice rinks at a giant sports center that you can play hockey and do figure skating in. You know what else doesn't have ghosts, probably? This upscale giant shopping center and retail, the Upper Canada Mall. You know, I was down Main Street South and I found out that this is 150 one-of-a-kind shops, sites, salons, services, pubs, eatery, activity, and more. It's a pretty sweet Main Street. You know, well, it's not really ghostly. The South Lake Regional Health Center. It's a hospital that had John Candy and Jim Carrey as babies being born in there. Cool. You know what might have ghosts in there? The Elman W. Campbell Museum. It covers the towns and surrounding areas, 1800s history, with artifactually things. And obviously, what's most ghostly of them all is Fairy Lake Park and Riverwalk Commons with a trail for long-ass biking and walking that's three townships wide. This trail stretches 10 kilometers long. That is one long trail. Apparently, Newmarket's one of the most romantic towns in Ontario. Who knew? How haunted is Newmarket, Ontario? And how weird and bored do the people in this new market town get? Well, apparently pretty bored to get their romantic on tenfold. That's going to do it for this episode of How Haunted Is Our Ontario? We'll spook you later, folks, and we'll scare you next time.